In Stranger Than Fiction, Will Ferrell plays an incredibly boring man who discovers he is actually the main character in a novel when he begins hearing his own narration. It's an interesting premise, but does it make for an interesting film? Little did Shannon know that each segue was bringing him closer to his doom. His wittier sides were merely the steps in a staircase that would lead, ultimately, to his own mortality. What happens at the end? I don't want to spoil it. Oh, I see. Strange of the fiction. Yes. Yes. It certainly was. I um, I've gone through a few phases with this film. I've gone through yeah ups and downs, peaks and troughs about my enjoyment of it. Mm. Uh, as soon as it finished, the very first reaction I had to it was, uh, it was really really contrived. I thought it's a film that so wants to be adaptation and so so wants to be something Charlie Kaufman. It yeah. so wants to be that. Yeah. And it tries so hard and it I and I hold obviously Charlie Kaufman very high esteem and it's and this fails miserably. And then I tried to give it some more credit. And I was like, well, maybe it's just, because it's a very sweet, good-natured, feel-good film, mm -hmm. actually, ultimately, in the end, sort of thing. And I thought, well, maybe I'm not giving you enough credit. Maybe it's just using the, you know, the, uh, the voiceover narrator, someone's controlling my life as a device in order to sell, you know, a very feel-good romantic comedy kind of thing. Yep. And I said, okay, well, maybe that was his point all along sort of thing. And then, okay, I started to warm to it a bit more. But now, finally, I've sort of come to the point that I think initially he thought of it as a Charlie Kaufman kind of thing. Mm. And then he's got together with a producer or someone else and they've tried to work out the best way to use that concept in a movie. And the best way to do it is to make a feel-good, happy film. And that's my final... Thing. Okay, that's a, that's yeah. an interesting take on it. Yeah, but I've gone. I really have gone up and down in the space of uh, twenty four hours. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, but it's. Uh, I think that's 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 my final thought. It's it's good. It tries very hard, and uh, I'm going to give it a little credit. But I think it tries far too hard. Great science fiction and fantasy. I think the reason people like it, not the pulpy stuff, but the really good stuff, is where they come up with an idea and they explore all of its facets. I was trying to think of some really good examples of that. Um, well, as you say, the Charlie Kaufman stuff, Eternal Sunshine. Come, comes up with this idea and explores all of its different facets. What, what is every stage? What is every, every result of uh, this thing that they've invented? What will it be? Yeah. And he really sees it through to the end. This doesn't. It's a sellout. It well. I think it sells it out. Well, they say, what if this guy hears a narrator and they come up with this plot and they don't want to deviate from it? They don't want to say, for instance, well, if he does everything she writes, what happens if she writes? Well, he can fly. And how come if everyone just assumes that this author lives in their world rather than as some godly thing? Yeah, okay. yeah. They're all so instantly tuned into the internal logic of the film rather than the possibilities the that this concept might. Mm. I want to give it credit, but it only gets halfway there. Yeah, it I agree, should yeah. go so much further. Yeah. I didn't like his direction. I, I, I really didn't like Finding Neverland. Yeah. I thought that was an I, awfully directed. He I seems to pick. Film. Mark, <laughs> Mark Forster seems to pick. Uh, character pieces with really really interesting characters and really interesting emotion and then does nothing with it he just sort of stands back and just lets the script play out and it's very strange for me to be interested in that but not really have a whole lot of skill in that area mm. I think it's very interesting that Maggie Gyllenhaal was in both this and Adaptation and Adaptation is a film where it's there's no or there is a deliberate sell out and it plays with the audience and all the rest of it this yeah. one it's a sellout, but they're not aware of it. You know, it's totally a Hollywood sort of uh, feel-good ending. And, With, uh, yeah, well, without that ending, without spoiling it, there is a final voiceover that is so pat and irrelevant that's what I think and just right. ties it yeah. all up and has nothing to do with anything that's coming beforehand yeah. I just thought man you guys just ran out of ideas for the ending didn't you it really is a good concept isn't it yeah it's, it's a great concept yeah and I think it really does get wasted um, yeah. by both the director and also the um, and the script itself it's yeah it does wane uh, mm. considerably I think yeah I think probably about the halfway point I think you're right yeah, yeah it's um I think, I think it's trying there far too hard and it annoys you because it's so it does so many things right and yet it's it's there hang on Keep going. Go, man, go! <laughs> no, keep going. We don't endorse this kind of behaviour, but maybe we do. This is where the concept is. Yeah. This is... Hey, fair <laughs> <right here. laughs> And that's, that's sort of where the film is. Wow. And, um... So you're hey, a glass there's, there's empty kind of guy. I was going to say, there must be a phrase that can describe <laughs> this. What, what is it? I wonder. Mm. Well, that was very, uh, that was very convenient. Yes. So would you, would you recommend this to anyone, do you think? 
Um, because you don't want to say don't go and see it. It's the worst thing because it's not. No, it's not the worst thing. No, not nearly. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, I think for the sort of the general populace, you know, the plebs out there, uh, all of which are watching, and um, yeah, I think they'll probably get a kick out of it. But it's uh, because we're uber critical. uh, I think it sort of it doesn't live up to. So you're saying only you and I are smart enough to realise it's not as good as it could be. Well, (laughs) don't want to brag about it. (laughs) No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I would recommend this to the people I know mostly because the people I know don't get out to the movies that often if when they do go I wouldn't want to suggest something that's halfway there because there's a lot of good stuff out there at the moment True. and that's all the rhyme we have for you this week join us next time when we look at the development status of comic book movies we talk acronyms with AFI CEO James Hewison and we take notes on notes on a scandal Remember to stop by the Bazura Project website where you, the viewer, can leave comments telling us just how awesome you think we are. Abuse is also accepted. We really just crave the attention. So until next week... Sign off, catchphrase. (laughs) 